Hey, well, it's a snow day today, and for Victoria, that's almost never happens. We don't get this, this amount of snow. Victoria, we almost get no snow at all over the holidays. So this is pretty cool, and it's a lot of fun. And this is also marking the day as my first video log. I've been inspired by a number of people, and I think it's time to just put it out there, get it out there, and say why, as a parent, I started a school. Now, not many people start a school. I get that. It's not something that you want to put on your resume. It's not, you know, something that everybody wants to aspire to do. I know. A little bit crazy, maybe, but that's where I started. And I think we all have great ideas, and especially kids have wonderful ideas. And I've seen this when I initially did the Rethink Thinking events over the weekend. And we had 250 high school kids come down, and it was all about them being able to express their ideas, form their own groups, adults not really involved except to answer questions or be there as facilitators for the communication. And amazingly, the kids came up with all kinds of great ideas. So what this told me basically was that kids have ideas and they get inspired by their own ideas and of course we do too as adults. We just get the privilege to be able to follow those ideas. Now let me see if I can explain why it's important for kids to learn from their own ideas. I was going to go in and continue this but I just realized that I've lost my glasses and I can't really do any close work without them so uh, I'm pretty sure I went to a restaurant last night and I think I left them on the counter. I just got my glasses from this uh, Korean and sushi restaurant where I was there last night and had a fabulous dinner. They decorated their food uh, amazingly. I've never had really that kind of fun sushi uh, before. Just all kinds of neat little pieces added to it to make it quite decorative and interesting and fun. So uh, I just unfortunately forgot my glasses while I was there. way I was rethinking how I wanted to pose that question and I thought how do I really show how ideas lead to more learning and deeper learning so when I was 30 years old I wanted to play basketball I'd never played before I saw my friends playing they were all having fun and I just wanted to join in without being a cheerleader on the side so I started in on it. I bought videos from some college uh, coaches who put out videos about how to train uh, their, you know, college level players. And I bought some books and I kind of watched a lot of stuff and I asked tons of questions from my friends and they coached me and which was super helpful. And I'm sure they laughed along the way with my missed dribbles and, you know, six foot five guy, white guy trying to you know, do fancy moves, but had a fun along the way. That idea, that inspiration that I had really led to a ton of learning. I don't think I would have learned that if I just picked up a book and just wanted to start to read about basketball. So that's my question. And I'll be right back. I got my book. My book, I like my book. And my pen. All right, so I really think about what this question is. Because questions are really important. Knowledge is a commodity. The world no longer cares whether or not you're smarter than a fifth grader or how well you do a trivial pursuit. What the world cares about is not what you know, but what you can do with what you know. And I think I'm probably going to do another one that's why questions are actually so important to ask because the answers that our brain comes up with is always dependent on the questions that we're asking ourselves. But today is how do I show students, let's say, benefit by learning? Okay. 
Actually, no, not students. I'm going to do, yeah, that's better. All right. Question today is, how do I show our students, not our students, but our kids, really, our kids, it's our community, right? This is the, the kids that we're bringing up, whether that you have your own kids or whether you're a teacher or whether you're a coach or facilitating this for other kids, whether it doesn't matter what they're doing, they're out in the playground, they're learning, they're playing, they're learning. And so how do we, as adults, kind of help our kids benefit by learning from their own, their own ideas, right? All right, own ideas. So how do we help them learn from their own ideas? I find that when my son was young, he struggled sometimes. He'd come home and he'd have a struggling moment at school where he wanted to do, he wanted to learn something, but the teacher wouldn't let him. It was out of scope and it wasn't part of, you know, the learning. You know, starting a school gave me a ton of inside information about how education is run and I get to see a different perspective. I've always been a parent on the outside. Now I get to be on the inside and I get to see a few things. I want to show a little bit more to you and give a little bit more to you about why and why I started a school and why this is important. If you talk to an educator, many of them will say they will talk about something called Bloom's Taxonomy. And so this is Bloom's Taxonomy. This is the different levels of thinking or learning that we as humans go through, especially in school. We definitely do this in, in school. And so right down the bottom here, this is the lowest form of learning. This is remembering. This is memorizing. This is the stuff, you know, if you're having to memorize uh, information, words, uh, memorize formulas, things like that. That's where this is at. And then you go up all these different levels. So we've got understanding and applying, analyzing, right? Evaluation of the knowledge that you have, and then you get to creating. And so it's moving up this level of thinking to the top, which is creating. And if you're at this level, you're able to, you know, connect the dots in various different things that you've understood or learned, different industries that might come up in your mind. You can start to connect the dots. And this is where you see a lot of people who seem to be entrepreneurial or creative. They connect the dots in different ways that people don't normally expect. So what if we took this, and I'm maybe not saying this literally, but what if we took this and flipped it? Now we have creating near the beginning and going all the way down this path. And so if we have kids looking at their ideas, giving them permission to follow their own ideas, that their ideas aren't wrong, bad, poor, right? And if they can come up with their own ideas, I guarantee you they will have sparks of intrinsic motivation. They'll find it something within themselves that they will drive towards. And teachers, this is what teachers do. Teachers are great at this. They're great at now taking some ideas that the kids might have and working on them to maybe analyze and ask better questions or maybe just figure out how to apply, apply some of the knowledge that they just learned from something that they, that they like. Ideas are so important, especially for kids. And, and here's why, here's another example. So, uh, you know, we've at our school have had uh, numerous times where a kid will come out of the room, out of the kitchen, from the makerspace, from outside, and go, I want to know more about this. And it might be something like, uh, you know, one, one kid came out and said, with, out of the kitchen with a knife, and said, how do we make these? What do they mean by critical thinking? The ability to ask the right questions. Ask really good questions. Like, how can I make one of these? How do we make this? How do we make a knife? Of course, it's a great question. I'm not even actually sure myself. But what that spawned was the whole school went to a local uh, blacksmith where he showed how he makes all kinds of things, plates, armor, swords, all kind of jewelry, all kinds of things with the proper blacksmithing, old school, you know, thing right there, heating everything up. They got inspired, a bunch of the kids came back, they figured out with the help of the teachers how to create a little mini blacksmith shop at the school, 
outside, safety first. And what that really showed is that they were able to learn about melting temperatures of metal, uh, how metal softens and why it softens, and even safety and the rules around really heating up the coal so hot that it's almost white colored, and why it's white colored from orange colored and blue. All good questions. All spawn from an idea. So if we're able to help kids follow their own ideas, follow some of their own path, that will lead to a lot more learning and depth of learning. <laughs>